What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Omnic Lab. This is episode 95. I'm your host, Rob May, coming in from Japan. Joining me this week is Andres Gomez, all the way in Georgia. What's up, Andres? What's up? What's up? It's a chilly night over here. My cat is loving it. I'm not loving it so much, but, you know, I'm nice and cozy here in the studio. Can't complain. Got all set up in the brand new apartment, right? Yes. We had Girlfriend's a little scare. Happy. Cat's happy. Andres is still strained. <laughs> so far, so good. We had a little scare yesterday. One pipe broke in below the building, and we had water <laughs> leaking in the bathroom, like, everywhere. And at first, they thought I was oh joking, goodness. or I was, like, crazy or something. They're like, oh, yeah, we'll go check it out. But I was like, no, no, no. You guys really need to come here. There's, like, water leaking out. And then they came. They repaired it pretty fast. So aside from that, the new apartment is pretty good. Sweet, sweet. Well, this week, guys, Andres and I are not joined by any special guests. However, uh, that means that this week is another entry into the Strat Brewing. So this week, we're going to be jumping into a little bit more of a, I guess I would say, raw topic. <laughs> Andres and I are like, <laughs> we're really bringing it back the to the roots. Rank. Yeah. This, this, is, is the... this is a little bit of what we used to be, where we yeah. were just like sit at the top of the show and talk about like our ranked experiences for a good amount of time. This is going to be the, I guess, the main focus here is kind of like how we play and like what we do. And so what we're going to end up talking about is personally, I played about 25 games yesterday nice. and still um, like I played with the six stack for three games. I played with the trio for like it's another two or three games. And then I played in a duo queue for like the other 15 or so. And um, man, it was it was a really rough day. And um so I wanted to talk about tilt today and kind of just like personal experiences of like trying to find when you're like into the tilt and when you're like slowly coming out of it and like knowing your limitations. And then Andres is going to kind of combat that on the other side of the coin with a, a theory called flow theory. You may know the scene. It sounds kind of funky, but flow theory is basically getting in the zone and like the scientific set up for that yeah now we're not it. like experts on this but we <laughs> did a little bit of research so we're gonna break that down a little bit for you believe it or not there's a lot of scientific like research on this kind of thing it's a state of mind the flow or the zone you might call it some of you might know it as ultra instinct um super saiyan blue whatever <laughs> you want to call it i think that it's something that applies to Overwatch, and I want to talk a little bit about it because it can help you combat tilt. So I think that go those two go along together. And yeah, today we just wanted to bring it back to the roots, do a more chill show, uh, just Rob and, Rob and I talking about strategies, some of our stories. Um, this type of shows, I, I like every once in a while. I like including the community as well. So if you guys like this type of show, please send us any questions, any feedback, any stories. Whenever we have time, like today... We'll fit them in and we'll share it with you guys. Yeah, we're trying to make this more of a monthly gig. Uh, last month we kind of missed it because we had a lot of stuff we, we had planned. And so uh, we did it the month prior. But we're going to try to make this a little bit more of a regular thing and kind of mix it up for you guys on the podcast feed. That being said, we have some heads updates as per usual. Uh, so let's get into this. So we have the game night. We're still in the process of updating the bot. I haven't touched base with my, my admin yet, but we are planning on March the 30th for our game night that would be basically anytime after about 12 to 2 p.m eastern time would be about the starting time about noon pacific i think is the general gist and um this we are back on daylight savings time out of here Woo! so we're at standard time thank goodness i have an hour back to plan for podcasting and for playing with friends so it's good uh, we also have a sponsor for the show. We have Top Score Solutions. I talked with Ben this week. Said he's going to be continuing the sponsorship with us. Um, so his name is Ben, but he also goes by the tag I Need Peeling in our Discord. He also has his own Discord, and you can find him at topscoresolutions.com or Twitter at Top Score Esports. He's offering the business consulting and esports field. So this is for aspiring coaches. Uh, returning coaches trying to find a little bit of a connector, starting teams, developing apps and services, boosting subscriber bases, or just working in general within esports, you can visit the website and his Twitter. He has a Discord server that's connected with those, and I highly, highly recommend it as a personal user of the service. I only needed to use it for like a week 
talking with Ben and getting an announcement in there and I'm now coaching. So I'm really enjoying it. I talked with my team this week. We actually have a new DPS player we're going to be trialing and another guy taking a break. So we're working on some things. We had some pretty big progress, but we're working on trying to balance schedules within VOD reviews and listening to coach VOD reviews and then also balancing that with our scrim schedule and getting people to show up, which is really difficult with a lot of college students. So we're working on that. <laughs> Andres, why don't you let people know uh, what's going on with Omnic Meta? Not anything news, uh, new, but the uh, guess I guess you could say the soft secret announcement that Switch gave us this week. We can't really say much about. You want to dive into that? Yeah, Omnic Meta has been working on some really awesome stuff. I don't think that it's ready for the public. It's still in beta beta testing mode. But he's working on some really cool analysis stuff and, and uh, data tracking for everyone. I know there's a couple of data tracking websites out there that offer stat tracking and you can see some of your progress. But Switch is giving a little twist of his own. There's not a lot of details that we can reveal right now. Whenever he's ready, he'll let us know when the public's open for that kind of stuff. But be in the lookout because Omnic Meta working on a lot of new stuff. And as always, you can always go to his website, omnicmeta.com, and check out his latest articles on how the meta is evolving, what heroes are popular, and what you should be looking out for. Awesome. And last is the owl recap. I'll give that back to you, Andres. So you can talk about the Discord setup here. Absolutely. If you guys are not part of the Discord yet, we are adding a new section for the Owl Recap. Those of, you who, those of you who follow me in that show covering all of the news and matches and results for the Overwatch League, we now have a section on the Discord. So those of you who are not in the Discord yet and want to talk Overwatch League, you should join us now. We are posting news constantly. We're there debating the live matches. Um, and if you want to reach out to us, the hosts, and participate in that podcast, you can definitely do it now through the Omnic Lab Discord as well. Those of you who are already part of the Discord, just know that that new section is there. And if you are into the podcast as well, that's a good way to reach us. And last up is our Diamond Sponsors, which I will blast through. We have some of the best people supporting Omnic Lab. We've got Ben K, Chris to play a good Apollo, Golden Soldier A, Great Root Bear, Jeff B, Kip, Lysum, Magic, Never Clutch, not Meta, who is in the chat as Saxy Stolf. He's got his new update stuff on the website. I talked with him this week. Got Jan Jinkle, Ricky Tiki Shazir, Top Score Solutions, of course, Tragic Zach, and brand new Diamond Patron. I will be giving her Discord name because I don't know if she wants her actual name on, on the show, but her Discord name is The Britmus. What's up, Britmus? I, I hope you're in able to watch the VOD for this because that was <laughs> a lot of fun to read off that fast. We also have a new patron that's not Diamond. The, joining the crew, we have Robert P. Pretty cool name, I must say. Um, you Robert guys P. are great for joining us. I really appreciate it, and I wanted to set this in as another reminder. Patreon.com slash OmniClab is the best way to financially support us and get me to BlizzCon. Expenses will be higher this year because we're trying to go to a good hotel with this, like within the strip. So the Marriott and the, uh, what's the other one, Andres? I can't remember the Hilton. The Hilton, I yes. Two on the main strip. It's very, and... it's very nice being in those hotels because you're in the thick of things. You don't have to go anywhere. You just go no outside of the hotel and you're in the convention. Yeah, you don't have to exactly. walk or take Ubers or stuff. So it does make it a lot easier. Thank you so much for the support, guys. If you guys want to be a Diamond patron and get your name uh, displayed on the show as a proud executive producer, you can do so through Patreon, like Rob said. It helps us out a lot. We still have a couple of spots left in there, even though you guys have been super generous and we're super impressed that so many of you are supporting us at this level. And as well as all of the patrons at all levels. You guys are super, super awesome. And you make all this so enormously nice for us. I, I can't thank you enough. Yeah, we don't have many slots left. We only have slots for 25 Diamonds patrons, and we're at 17. So we're pretty close to capacity on that uh, as far as how much space we have left. So you want to jump on that if, you, if you're there. If not, you can always support us at a different level. That's totally fine. Let's break down the topic. So tilt, other things, whatever you have. I know that we are vying for a spot right now um, with... Um, 
our live show and owl recap so i'm gonna try or not owl recap but owl uh game so i'm gonna try to not be distracted by that <laughs> but it's are just you, are you watching Sock, owl like games while podcasting Rob? i'm not i'm not but i'm really tempted to go do that <laughs> so uh yeah shock's playing right now as we're, we're recording on uh march 17th in or march 16th in u.s time so um let's talk about tilt so like I said at the top of the show, we've been playing, I've been playing a lot of games with my duo queue partner pretty much exclusively, unless it's on my alt, which I did all my placements and placed about 100 SR higher than I currently am, which is pretty stupid, but it is what happens. Um, <laughs> Rob exposed. Yeah, sorry. Um, the, the tilt here is, I just wanted to give you kind of like a doctor's clinical symptoms, if you will, okay? If so, you, so, doctor, I'm suffering from tilt. What are the symptoms? <laughs> well, here's the thing: is it's not even so much that I'm trying to get your symptoms to to, uh, or that you think you're suffering from tilt. This is like you're going into ranked and you're not realizing that you have symptoms of the disease called tilt. Does that make sense? It, that's the number one symptom. You don't realize you have it. That's that's the thing. It's it's not like a it's not like a common cold where you start sneezing and you kind of like feel gross. It's like tilt is almost like you kind of win games, you lose games. I've got some people that are like real tilted when we're winning for whatever reason. Um, <laughs> I've had that before. But, yeah, like you have to identify these symptoms, and like most mental disorders, uh, admitting that you have the problem is the first step for progress. Okay. <laughs> So That's the seventh step of recovery by Rob. And the the only other thing I'm going to say to the lead in here is that these are all things that I was noticing yesterday that I was succumbing to as a loudmouth styled player, not a very quiet player, as Andres can very well attest to. I like to do <laughs> shot calling a lot, even if they're wrong. Um, So... What is the breakdown of the symptoms that you could potentially see with tilt and why you should do a cue? Almost always you have a partner calling you out on this crap. Um, comms. Your communication ability becomes less accurate. This is typically for higher tier players that are used to accurate calls. If you're not doing accurate calling like Discord targeting, target priority, heroes being out of position... Um, staggering type calls and or positioning calls um, where the enemy team is engaging you from like where there's a Widowmaker or a Genji and his location is only like front, back, left, right. These are very inaccurate calls. Honestly, you want to say anything on that one? Yeah, I, I think I've experienced it a little bit myself or with my other teammates. I think sometimes when people get really tilted, they will go either one of two routes. They will... Try to overwhelm comms with whatever they want to do, even if what's what they're doing is not necessarily the best thing. For example, three of your teammates die and they still decide they want to go in and graviton. So they're just screaming, I'm going to grab, I'm, I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab. And they are not realizing the state of the battle, Everyone's maybe. Uh, yeah. Or the other extreme that I've seen is they go radio silent, right? Maybe in the beginning mm -hmm. of the game, they were engaging in some comms. Your team was communicating back and forth. They were mm. calling out certain people, certain targets. Um, something goes wrong, and then everybody stops talking. And it's like nobody wants to talk to anyone. And that that is pretty bad, too, sometimes. We've actually seen this uh, this particular going radio silent type of symptom in the Overwatch League with some of the behind-the-scenes videos that the Outlaws have been putting out. When they got 4 0 a couple games, um, they had this issue where they were losing and they lost two games. And after the half, or after the, the, the first loss, they get in the second one and they are losing really, really poorly and they don't say anything. And there's no shot calls to be said, so you can't play the game. <laughs> right. right and part, part of it can be tilt. Part of it can be, you know, you're demoralized. So maybe mm -hmm. your confidence is not the highest and you don't feel like anything that you have to say is necessarily very helpful, but mm -hmm. sometimes even saying things like you need help because somebody's behind you or the direction in which the enemy is coming, um, simple details like that can turn a fight around, right? If your team has 
two seconds more to turn around rather than getting jumped without them knowing. It can be the difference of you winning that fight, even if you're not performing that well, right? Right, right, right. All right, the next one. Attacking teammates passive aggressive and primarily aggressively now what you mean, mean like like verbally aggressive? yes verbally verbal abuse how does this happen in a passive aggressive manner guys i think we need to change the dps i'm in zenyatta and i have gold damage mentioning metals is the next step but i i've got this, these two overlap so i'm going to kind of put these in the same category mentioning metals is a way of being passive aggressive the funniest ways to do this is whenever you have a Winston on your team, whether it's you or the other person, and mentioning that you have gold eliminations on Winston, that should be like a baseline assumption that you should be participating in almost every kill that happens on Winston <laughs> because you have cleave damage that can't miss in a frontal cone, and anything that's dying is usually in front of you. <laughs> so <laughs> if you have gold eliminations, that means that you're hitting par. Generally speaking, gold or silver or bronze eliminations usually means par for Winston and gives you a good staple of what your DPS are actually putting out, um, not a, an indicative of an issue on the team. So keep that in mind when you're playing Winston, but other heroes, like you need to understand, like I have gold damage and it's four kills. That doesn't mean that you're carrying. That means that you don't have enough kills even as a DPS and your team is struggling, whether it's you or the other DPS, it's everyone. So these are these are key factors where symptoms of using metals or using your personal statistics that are racking up generally slowly or or fast is not indicative of the team's success, but rather your individual play that can be informed in that moment that you need to do more even though you're at the top. It means you're going to have to carry harder. It doesn't mean that you can use that as a as a way to attack your teammates for playing poorly because it's not going to help them play better. Yeah, and I, I think attacking your teammates verbally, wh whatever it may be, you know, telling them that they suck or that they're terrible and they should uninstall, or even like you said, sometimes it's a little more subtle than that. It's a little more passive aggressive, like you said. It's not maybe direct at them. But maybe one player will speak to their duo partner saying, man, this Mercy really is not doing much. Or, man, if only I could get some heals or something like that. You know, like it, implying like somebody is doing terrible. Um, or some sometimes it happens where nobody will say anything. Nobody will contribute to the strategy or maybe dissecting what the enemy team is trying to do. And then towards the end of the match, one thing, once things are falling apart, they'll decide to address the problem. And rather than addressing the problem itself, they'll just attack a teammate, right? Like they, finally they've had right. enough and they will lunge at the lowest hanging fruit, right? Like who do they think is the lowest performer or who do they think has the wrong pick or who do they think that, wasn't performing at their top level. I don't know any any of these things and just point snarky remarks. And to be honest, I think that's your own personal problem. If you're the kind of person who's attacking other people because you're losing in a game, like that it comes within you. That is not, not the other people attacking you or being against you. And at the end of the day, everyone who's playing this game, especially in the competitive ladder, is trying to prove as much as you. So as long as other people are there trying to improve... And maybe they're not performing at their top level, but, you know, they're there helping you. Maybe they're filling a role that they're not even that good at, but the team just did it because nobody else picked it, right? Um, mm. So, I don't know. To me, it just seems futile to attack your teammates in this game where you need them. <laughs> All right. I just added this one because uh, this overlaps with this is checking players' profiles and their win ratios. This is something you should just not do in general like doing the profile check in, in the beginning of the game to see okay well this guy likes to play this and this and this when they haven't picked a hero yet or they do pick a hero they're like oh, okay i have a little bit of more confidence in them than i would before or okay this might be indicative this guy's playing widowmaker and has like 10 minutes on it this season probably not the strongest widowmaker but uh that just means that i need to basically cover for them and give them even more space than i would normally right and you want to help them get into a position. But then when you start going into the 
the depths of this when you're just like, oh my gosh, you ne- like you're playing Bastion and da 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 da. Like you're you're going into what somebody else is doing when even you yourself find yourself in locations where you have to flex around people like this. Um, you have to really sit down and not look at the win ratios because. I can tell you right now, I've got negative win rates this season on the heroes that I am performing the best on. And that doesn't necessarily mean that that player is good or bad at that hero. You can even have people that have amazing win rates on heroes they're not comfortable on that are just really powerful, like Diva and Winston, for example. <laughs> just getting really good teams when you have to flex um, because you're letting your teammates play something they're really good at and your average at is typically better in some situations. So don't go in down the, the pipe of looking at people's win rates and, and stuff down the pipeline because the fact of the matter is everyone struggles at the end of the day, right? Yeah, and it goes down to what we just said, right? There's just no point in, like, mentioning this sort of thing during the fight. Like, I don't, I don't think I've ever been in a game where I've been, like, I told a teammate, wow, you are really bad at this hero, and they've turned around and said, you know what? You're right. You're right. <laughs> I'm really bad at this hero. Let me switch. What do you think I should, should switch to? Tell me what do you want me to do? Like that has never happened in Unless the history like of Earth. Just completely full of sarcasm, right? Like there's <laughs> no way that they're going to say that and actually mean it. Exactly. So it's just, again, attacking your teammates. And at the end of the day, it it just hurts you, right? Like if you're attacking your teammates, you are creating a bad vibe for everyone and yourself. Yeah. All right. Let's keep it moving because I want to get to Andres's flow theory. So the next thing here is um, sloppy positioning. This is something that you're going to, again, this is something that's more noticeable when you're in kind of gold, platinum, and you're kind of moving up the ranks where positioning is something that people are actually starting to pay attention to a little bit more. And I'm not saying that bronze and silver players aren't trying to pay attention to their positioning, but they may not always know where the proper location is, and that's part of the general gist of the things that they should be working on in a given situation. Where should I be? Um, in general, when you get up to uh, the higher ranks, uh, from what I have understood, you'll have a mix of people that don't really understand good positioning but can usually kill people anyways. And then they get to, you know, golden plat. And then, like, once you get the diamond, you have to be in the right place and making the right decisions and hitting your shots. Like, otherwise, you're going to be in a, a world of hurt and you have to do it fast. So, Andres, do you want to talk a little bit about that one? Man, I'm I'm the number one offender here. When I start getting flustered, sometimes I rush too much, right? I think that... My style as a player is generally very aggressive. I like the heroes that can get in your face. I like the heroes that can bring the fight to you. So when I start losing my cool and I start going down the tilt path, I think this is one of the first mistakes that I I start making. I try to get to the enemy back as fast as possible so I can pick up on my slack, right? Like if I get killed, I'm like, oh no, I need to get back here as fast as possible. But... In that rush, sometimes you end up putting yourself in dangerous situations and putting yourself at at more risk than necessary. So just hasty plays, uh, hasty positioning, and you trying to outskill your opponents because you're in that level of tilt, you know. I, I think it's part a little bit of pride. It's part a little bit of, you know, you want to show your team that you can perform on the hero. Yeah. (laughs) Or or they you know, you can you know how to play that hero because We've all had those matches, right, where you're killing it on whatever it is, on Soldier or on Genji, or you're killing it on Lucio, and then the next game, for some reason, you got distracted or some a little snarky comment kind of like put you off of your game, or maybe you just happen to find that team that is just two other players are incredibly good at countering your Lucio or your Genji, and then you're not performing that well that game. It can be for any of those reasons, but suddenly you're finding yourself in in a place you don't want to be and you're rushing yourself to try to perform better. And in that rush to try to perform better, you're actually hurting yourself a little more and your team in, in the along, your, along the way. Right. And a lot of this gets put into the driver's seat of like, and if you're just doing, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're 
sl like your sloppy in positioning is very general or you're over aggressive in your play. Although those two are synonymous. It could just mean like you are utilizing something in a very sloppy way. And a, and a good example of this again, because I've been playing a ton of Zenyatta and Moira is that Moira, you will just use fade to go in and like chase. Yeah. You'll just chase kills over and over and over and over. Or you're engaging too early before your team is there. Or with Zenyatta, I'm not maintaining in my mind the key up thing that you need to worry about, which is maintaining uptime, surviving, putting a harmony out, and putting a discard on what your team is killing. You don't even have to call out the discard. I've actually been working with my coaching team on this. I'm just like, guys, we don't have to call out a Discord target. We call out a target we want to kill, and we Discord that. <laughs> like, we don't have to, like, worry about communicating who's Discorded if you just put the Discord on somebody that's either killing you directly in the moment or you're putting it on what your team is killing in the moment. Right. And so it's just, like, key functions to your hero in order to perform at, like, the bottom of the skill floor. Like, in order to maintain a decent effort of your hero and you're being sloppy with that, that's a very big contingency um, within finding tilt, okay? Right. And Next setup. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say it's usually more worth it to focus your concentration on those things that you just mentioned, on the key things that your hero must be doing. And sometimes it's hard when your emotions are running hot, when maybe the room temperature is getting a little warmer, you're starting to sweat a little bit, you have to take off your hoodie because, man, things are getting a little too real. Um, sometimes it's hard to c keep your cool and bring yourself back down and tell yourself, okay, what do I really need to be doing? Because we're all human, right? Sometimes when, when, you know, our, our blood starts flowing a little faster or <laughs> rationality gets hurt a little bit. Right. All right. Next up on the list, lack of healing teammates. Now this is again, support main talking to you, but this can also translate to playing heroes that have a protective orientation. I this think can this, be your soldiers. this can this can be your this can translate ahead. to pretty much every hero. But let's start with the supports. Okay, so with supports, this usually means that you're playing over aggressive. Like I said, with Zenyatta, you're not maintaining proper targeting with who gets harmony in your priority system. We talked a lot about this when we had Fu on talking about healing priority before we got into the Moira stuff. And talking about who gets the priority in the triangle, you typically would be healing tanks, but you're not shifting from them to heal the right targets, and you're ignoring them when you're tilted in order to get the damage that you feel like your team is lacking. Like Fu said, a lot of times you'll be popping off as a healer, and you stop doing that because your team is performing poorly. You have to keep enabling them even if you think it's the wrong decision to go full damage Moira, right? Or keep throwing the healing orbs. Keep, keep keeping your team up. Keep using your coalescence as a heal, not as a damage. Can you use them as other things? Yes, but that's the key, right? And I, I think this applies to all of the heroes. Like when you say lack of healing your teammates or maybe it's as protecting. a support, you get tilted and you you stop caring so much as your teammates, or maybe you're not very fond of your teammates or not very paying it very much attention to them. Maybe in your head, you've told yourself, my teammates are not that good. So even though you're the healer, you're just not taking care of them. Like you would take care of a player you think is really good, for example. Um, and this can happen in all roles as a tank. You might get tunnel vision. Like maybe the Reinhardt keeps winning, uh, shield battles against you or keeps, taunting you into using it shatter at the wrong time so you're getting kind of tilted he keeps taunting you kind of thing so you're too focused on him to the point where maybe you're not protecting your back line or you're engaging him too soon and focusing on him too soon while ignoring that maybe your back line is not there with you and they're getting harassed from a different angle and then you keep dying to this rind and now you're tilted at your mercy you're calling her names and telling her how much she sucks at healing because she can't keep you alive like the other mercy is keeping your rind alive but you're ignoring the vital fact that your mercy can not keep you alive because you're engaging without her and it can happen to the DPS as well. Maybe you're a Widowmaker and you're so focused on the Widowmaker duel that you're ignoring the tanks, the enemy tanks that are standing right next to you, killing your team. 
um, and your team has no damage against them because all of your attention has been put into the enemy Widowmaker while you could be shooting those tanks and helping your team um, clear off some space for you so that later you can focus on that duel. Uh, it's all small factors, I think. Yeah, for sure. And definitely this translates even to tanks where you're just like not protecting teammates with the shield. You're just going in, you know, mm -hmm. or you're just staying on the point and holding point when maybe you should be off of it and you should be pushing, you know, generally speaking, the cart is where the Lucios and the Zenyatas sit and the rest of you can go play the game. <laughs> Typically is what ends up happening <laughs> in the cart, at least. So uh, what's the last thing here? We have over focus on rank. And this is the one thing that everyone does including myself including andres when we're playing the game we always focus on what's the session what is our rank at the beginning what's it at the end what's it in game to game oh my gosh i lost 25 for this oh man i gained 30 for that oh man i lost way more than i normally do because i played winston and i'm not good at him whatever that is the overfocus on rank gets you out of the mental area where you can say I performed well because now you're believing an MMR system that's automated and not like informing your decisions of how you can improve. And also if you, if you took less points on the rank, like for the loss, you should say, okay, well, it looks like the system's saying I'm doing a little better than average. So that's a good thing. Even if I lost, I'm losing less rank. Or if I won, I didn't gain as much as I normally do. What could I have done differently in order to make that easier for my team to win? Because the game was really close. You know, situations like that. Absolutely. And I think that focusing on rank sometimes it's the easiest thing because is the um, feedback that is out there the most, right? It's right in front of your face. You get it after every game and is the number by which everyone kind of measures each other inside of the game. So I think it's very, it's a slippery slope, right? To always be going by rank. And it's also a lot of the, it's the main goal of a lot of people when they go into competitive. The goal of the entire match is to gain some rank. And the second that that goal seems unattainable, the second something goes wrong and they believe that their team might not be able to pull off the win against the enemy team, they throw a tantrum or they get really mad. Um, and I've been there too. When you're too focused on rank, that is what kind of where it leads sometimes, right? If you're if you're not getting it, then you're really disappointed on yourself and you almost believe that it's a waste of time to be in competitive. And that is exactly why I wanted to bring today the conversation about flow theory because... It can be something that might help you take away your mind from rank itself and measuring yourself with a number and instead putting the importance or your goals somewhere else where even if you lose the match, you can still feel fulfilled and accomplished and happy about having played the game. Now, before we jump into this, I want to mention one more thing about focusing on ranked, which is time. <clears throat> when you play Overwatch... A lot of players will, at the at least at the upper ranks, typically have to play more games because of the essence of decay. You will decay, decay rank if you're not playing regularly or so many games a week, and there's a minimum that they have to hit. Will they play a lot more than that? Generally speaking, yes. But what you're going to see with a lot of upper tier players that's very common outside of like what things they're doing in the games is that they are just typically playing more games in volume than others. And this is something that I've tried to bring over from Hearthstone that I haven't really been very good about doing, uh, which is in order to play better Overwatch, you need to play more Overwatch. If you're not doing more Overwatch than you were last season, um, then, then it's really difficult for you to climb. And if you're not hitting even the same amount that you played last season, then that's even more to climb. And this is something that Andres and I have said many, many times on the show that needs repeating. You need to play not just a lot of games, but you need to play a lot of games over the course of time each day, if possible. As regular as you can is usually the best way to doing it. Instead of just sitting down and playing 20 games in a day like I did, it's not bad, <laughs> but it's like you and need we to could play do it games every day. in between that. 
Yeah, if you could do it every yeah. day, that would be great. You'd be a pro. And that also <laughs> means competitive mode. This does not mean jumping in AIs. This does not mean running in the training bot range. This doesn't even mean training in a custom game or in quick play. It's not good practice until you're in ranked. And so until you can get it's almost like you're desensitizing yourself to ranked as ranked is practice and ranked is also the place that you can improve at the same, at the same rate. Competitive is a very odd thing. It's, 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 uh, it's like you have a soccer game and you're a soccer player, right? And you go and play a game and you're like, well, that was bad. I need to go practice this week. You don't really have like a practice scrimmage that you can do every, every day. You typically will just scrimmage against your own team and do drills and stuff. But with overwatch, Ranked mode is basically just like playing games and like I'll I'll echo what my my university coach said. He said the best way to practice before a game and and for games is by having games because it's the most game like scenario you can put yourself in for a game to perform. So how do you how do you improve in the game? You play the game and you play it the way it's meant to be played in the competitive mode where people are wanting to compete. Um otherwise you're not going to get people that are serious. And until you can desensitize yourself from that and play regularly so you can do that, um, even if you don't have enough time, you don't want to entitle your small time slot to what you can say is when you're deserving of increased rank. Because frankly, the people that deserve the rank are the ones that are willing to work and invest the time to do it. Those are both mutually exclusive, but they also are inextricably bound. Does that make sense? So like, you want to make sure that you're both working hard, doing the research in and out of the game, practicing things in the game, and also dedicating enough time in order to get to the point where you can start mastering those things. All right, let's talk about ultimate instinct, getting in the zone or flow theory. Let's go. Ultra instinct. For those of you who get the Dragon Ball Super reference, uh, for those of you who don't, you might know this as flow theory or the zone or the being in the flow, however you want to call it. It's basically a state of mind. Some of you might have experienced this. If you play an instrument, if you play a sport, if you do any sort of art or performance like dancing or... I don't know, what, whatever you need to do with your body. Um, even playing video games counts under this activity. You might have experienced the state of flow. And it's basically the state of mind where action and awareness seem to blend with one another. Inputs coming to your brain and outputs go out like without any hiccups, basically. There's no friction there. You're moving accordingly without thinking very much. Things seems to flow very, very well. Um, it's also a state of mind where sometimes time might feel like everything is standing still while going by very fast. Hours can go by without you noticing. Um, you might even forget about your basic needs. You might forget hunger. You might forget sleep. Um, any of these things, you... You are basically completely absorbed into the moment and you are one with the activity. Uh, I know that a lot of you know what I'm talking about and a lot of people have experienced this. If you haven't experienced this with any activity, you're definitely missing out and you haven't explored things deep enough. But I'm sure that this happens regularly to anyone who has been really focused on something that they truly enjoy. Um, so, all right. We have defined ultra instinct or flow theory. It's backed up by scientific research. In fact, a lot of top performers, performers or athletes um, know about this state of mind and they actively seek it, which means that people can get better at getting into this state of mind. And you yourself as a player can use this to your advantage. Um, have, you ever, have you ever experienced this, Rob? There was a couple games last night where I definitely experienced this. I basically was able to 1v1 a Tracer on Zenyatta like every time she engaged me, and it was glorious. It was just <laughs> like, I can't... He and then there was a really weird game. You know how, how many games I play in a season Widowmaker, right, Andres? Mm -hmm. Like, one. Um, I had three triple kills on Night Market, Lijing, or Gardens, I'm just like sitting out there and I'm like ripping tanks in half. Like Winston's diving me. I'm just like in the zone. 
I was like, I can't miss a shot. What is this? So it happens. It happens very rarely, but it does happen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And usually when it's happening, it seems like you know exactly what to do inside of the game. Uh, when people try to engage you, it seems like you're always one step ahead of them and you can outplay mm -hmm. them that way. Um, you're very or hyper aware of what's going on in the game, what your team needs to do, what you need to do as your role, where you need to push. I think that when you experience it with Overwatch, it's quite entertaining. and It's probably like the best time to play Overwatch is the opposite state of mind of Tilt, right? <laughs> this is when you're performing exactly. your best. The polar ends. Yeah, we're going to from extreme to extreme of uh, mental states over here. Yeah. So uh, we, we, we talk about all the activities that can qualify for flow. Um, some people define these activities as things that you must have clear goals uh, and an easy way to progress in the activity. You... Also, the activity must also have immediate feedback. Uh, it's it's not something that if you do it, you won't know the results till the next day or the next week or something, um, which all of the activities that we're talking about, like sports or Overwatch, kind of qualify as that since you put it in an action right, and you right. immediately see how that results. Um, and it must also be balanced between challenge and skill level. So these are kind of like some definitions that some people out there have given to the state of flow and uh, activities that qualify for it. So you you have to be realistic about what you're trying to do, right? Um, if you just started playing Overwatch, maybe it's not going to be to play at the level of a Grandmaster Genji or something like that. You might, you might have to learn how to walk before you run kind of thing. But... Let's talk about achieving flow. One of the main things that you really need to do when you're trying to achieve flow is eliminate all of distractions. It is very hard to get into this hyper concentration state if you are constantly being brought out of the zone, right? So what I'm talking about this is, while well, playing Overwatch, you need to make it the thing that you're doing. Um, if you're trying to watch Overwatch League on the second monitor, Maybe talk to your girlfriend uh, every once in a while while in the game. Or maybe you're in Discord chatting with your pals. Um, even maybe you might be streaming and chatting with your chat. All of these are huge distractions. And sometimes you might even see it in the stream. When the streamer says, okay, guys, I'm going to get really serious over here. I'm going to stop reading chat. And they completely ignore everyone else. And they only concentrate in the game. Because otherwise, it's really hard to get to this state of hyper-concentration. You need to be of a one-track mind in that moment. Just one activity. Also, you must allow some time to reach it. It's kind of like when you go to sleep, you won't get into like that deep sleep state until a few hours into um, your sleep cycle. And... It's the same with uh, achieving the flow. You need to allow some time to to achieve the state. You, you're not just going to sit down at your desk and be like, all right, I'm in the zone. Let's go, boys. It's going to take a few games. <laughs> it's going to take some the time. Up, for, right? Yeah, you might have to warm up. Um, one game might not be enough. Two games might not be enough. You might be playing for a whole session and you might not achieve the state for a number of reasons. You might have gotten too distracted throughout it. You might have gotten tilted and... It, you didn't get a it, sense of being. You didn't get a <laughs> sense of being. Or other things, right? You might have not eaten properly that day. You might not have gotten a good night's sleep. The factors are many out there why you might not reach the state. And it's why it's so treasured, right? Everything can affect it. Your emotional state, your health at the moment, um, a variety of reasons, your environment... You want to add anything over here before we get into some Overwatch examples? I just really wanted to harp on the sense of being thing, like with dieting and like making sure you're eating. <laughs> there are times where it's like you have, I haven't had too much caffeine. It's like I'll have coffee and I haven't had any food. Or I'll not have coffee and that's the best decision for me because I'm like dehydrated and I'm not having water near me. Um, there's other times where I just like, I don't, I didn't have enough food. Or I'm like starving and I'm still playing. Um, there's the other side of the thing, which is like hardware issues that you might be having that you haven't fixed yet. Monitor, keyboard, sticking, um, 
You have a mouse that's kind of just going out on the fritz. Maybe you just have a bad mouse and you're like, well, I can't play today because my mouse is just deciding it's not the day, you know? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's any number of things that you need to be paying attention to um, that aren't even in the game to help you. Like we talked with like mental, mental prep, warm up prep, making sure you're healthy. Um, also, uh, something that you can do that's really difficult to get into the zone is when you have a lot of like maybe even personal issues that are going on. Maybe you had like a death in the family or your dog is sick or your brother just came in and like is having a rough day or you had a breakup, whatever it is, these things are mental instability moments that are making it really tough to achieve this and maybe requiring a lot more lead in to get in there. Or maybe it's just not going to happen for a few days. It doesn't mean you don't have to play. It just means you need to have realistic expectations when you want to try to achieve this. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that is what all of this is about, right? Being aware yeah. that you can achieve the states of mind and being aware aware of what you're currently in and if can you even get here because of all these other reasons, right? Like some days yeah. I walk away from the desk and I'm like, I don't think I'm going to be able to play Overwatch and enjoy at the level that I want because I I'm just not going to be able to get to that mental state right now. Um, and you, you can be realistic with yourself, but anyway, let's talk about actual flow state in Overwatch. How sure. does it affect it? Um, can, do we know any of any examples? Let me throw out a few over here, um, of my own, my own personal experience, learning the game and practicing certain heroes. I think that some of the examples of times that I felt like, wow, I'm really melding with this game. I, I think I'm in the zone lately have been both with Tracer and Genji. I think that those are the characters that I've been putting the most amount of time, the most amount of hours lately. They're characters that are really hard to play, and I've really been wanting to elevate my level in those. I'm still a platinum, a platinum diamond scrub with those, I think. Um, I can sometimes play against master players, but I think I'm not quite there yet. But point being is, it's taking me a long time to internalize a lot of the things that you have to do with those characters, uh, the combos, the blinks, the dash distances, the blinks distances, the ways that you can interact with your abilities. For example, to give you a quick example with Tracer, there's different ways that you can throw out your pulse bomb that are not super obvious in the beginning. You can blink to a person and then throw it, or you can throw it mid blink so that depending on where the person is in standing, you can after you blink to them, it goes out of your body a little bit sooner. So little small stuff like that that makes a huge difference that you can adapt depending on the situation. And it's taken me a long time to learn in and out. Things like her blinks, for example, being able to blink through doors that I'm not looking at directly or being able to orient myself in the map so that I know I can blink to the right, blink backwards and blink diagonally left and I'll be exactly where I want to be standing, for example. Um, more of the advanced stuff, I guess. And also, at the same time, practicing my tracking, knowing where to aim against different heroes, um, my positioning or and my blink cooldown usage, all these small things. But that's what I've been trying to focus on learning on these heroes. I go into um, single-player deathmatch or I go into the practice range, uh, quick play, and I'll... For a whole session, I'll be like, okay, right now I just want to internalize the distance of my blinks or the distance of my dash. So for like half an hour, I'll put on some cool music, practice that for a little bit. <clears throat> and over time, that has paid off. I've gotten to certain moments or certain matches where everything just seems to fit into itself, where I'm not really thinking, oh, I have to dash here. Oh, I need to use my pinky to press thing or... When you're learning a new hero, sometimes you even forget what skill is where. Like, that's me playing Doomfist. <laughs> I try to, like, oh, use yeah. my uppercut, and instead, instead I'll do the seismic slam. And seismic I'm like, ah, oh, that's yeah. not what I meant to do. But when you've had practice enough, that stops happening, and you stop thinking exactly what you need to be doing. And you just, as you recognize the situations that you're in, your body starts moving on its own and one of the things that I've recognized is with my tracking and my aiming, as I blink, it has improved quite drastically when I'm in the zone when I can 
I know exactly how much it takes me for my mouse to look directly behind me or to look 90 degrees to my right or to look diagonally right. And this helps a lot because once you've internalized this, let's say you're dragon blading and you dash and you just you just know by instinct that maybe the Anna landed on your left side. You don't even have to wait until you see the character model. You just slash and you move towards the left side and boom, then you have a kill skull on your on your feet. And you didn't have to think about it. You didn't have to see it. It just, you felt it. Yeah? You felt that that's what you needed to do and your body made the action and it happened to be the right one. And now you're good. That's kind of like a, a long-winded example <laughs> of states of flow. How, how about you, Rob? Have you felt this with any of the heroes? I'm trying to internalize this outside of the DPS realm because, <clears throat> like, I know that that's where you like to go. But there, there was that's a game my where realm, I had on yeah. Diva. Yeah, like there was a game I actually had on Diva where I my duo queue partner, like most of you guys know, is Jan Jinkle, who plays Diva, and playing with somebody who's very comfortable on Diva in almost every game, you start learning like what it's like to have that on support and what you really should be doing. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's just a couple of games where I basically was like, I, I looked at the team comp and you're just like, okay, I need matrix for this and this and this and this and this. And as soon as you see those things, or as soon as you're like tracking in your mind, okay, they're going to have alt soon. This fair is coming in. Wow. She's really aggressive. That means she's going to barrage. And so, like, the second she did the barrage, I, like, hit micro missiles, boosters, and, like, the defense matrix and ran straight into her the second I even hear her say justice. She didn't even finish the sentence and she's out of the sky. <laughs> I mean, you have, you have this type of a thing with D.Va. It's, like, the reactions that are predicated on how you counter things with tanks and also how you protect teammates. Where you, like, hear something or it's, like, I'm you know, Genji on me. And like, you just like, you don't even do anything because you know where your supports are moving. You can just hit the boosters and flip your mouse around and you're already defense matrixing them. Like you see this with very high level diva play. And on top of that, you also will see this with Winston's where Genji like uses his ultimate and you're like, I'm going in. You know what I mean? Like you just react to what things are. So like with tanks, especially with the dive meta, I feel like really good tank play is really predicated on calling the initiation or reacting to some of your teammates on in ranked play where you're not usually playing with them. You're just like kind of like watching and observing your team as they flow. And you get into the zone when you start noticing every time they move, you react to it, whether it's right. enemy or ally. And then with, with, with supports, it's actually very, very similar. You're just like, it, I feel like I'm clicking with that flow that Fu talked about the healing priorities, right? It's like, okay, I know this guy's going down. Our fair is low. Boom. I hit the fair. You like my, my goal is I want to try to get an orb or some form of healing on a target. That's low before they can hit the X button. I want to know that they're low without having them tell me that's my goal as a healer. And so you find yourself in the zone when nobody's asking for healing anymore. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, and and you're like you're, hitting your priorities. you're anticipating who needs a heal. You're being able to see how the enemy team is moving, and you can move yourself accordingly so that you're the least amount in danger, and you're also able to assist the person who needs it the most at the right times. Mm -hmm. I think that with support is definitely ideal. Um, and ultimate use is reactionary. Again, that's the other thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a quick example from Overwatch League, and actually this one comes from the infamous XQC. You can say anything you want about, want about XQC, but he is an incredible tank. And he yeah. has impressed me quite a few times with his reaction time and how deeply aware he can be sometimes as a tank. This one happened to be in Hanamura. He was defending the second point, and he was down standing in the point... And the enemy team was overlooking at him from the balconies. There was a thing as a Niara and a McCree up in two different balconies shooting at him. Uh, and he was trying to cover for himself and the team from below with his shield. And the McCree starts his ultimate. And there's nothing really stopping the McCree. Excuse is kind of left on his own. So he's trying to block Zenyatta and McCree at the same time, which... 
are slightly in slightly two different positions. So and they're above him as well. So a very mm-hmm. tough position for him. And then for a split second, you hear the enemy Reinhardt, because this is from his perspective. So you don't really see where the Reinhardt is standing. He's definitely not seeing where the Reinhardt is standing. But you just hear him to his right side, and you hear the beginning of the ultimate. The enemy Reinhardt, I can't remember what exactly he he says, but... Hammer. He, hammer! What, what, whatever he whatever yeah. says. Hammer down! Wait, there you go. You hear the hammer, and then XQC, in a matter of seconds, turns towards where he sees the sound. He definitely doesn't know where the hell the Reinhardt is standing, but he just flips his shield, blocks the shatter, and then immediately moves the shield back to block the McCree ult. And I, was, I saw this play. It was I was God-tier. completely baffled by this play. I was like, wow, this is a guy that is so aware of everything that is happening around him. And he didn't have to think what he needed to do. His his body Unreal. and his skills, just they just moved and to the right positions. And I think that that is the perfect example of, of flow state right there. Yeah, for sure. What's the next thing you have here? Um, yeah, I think I think that was pretty much it. I just, it? Yeah, we just, I just wanted to have a little talk about it and give different examples of it. The um, I can give one more if you like, or we can close it sure. out over here. Yeah, let's do one more. One of the um, one of the abilities that has taken me the longest to master, and this one really requires you to have an instinct for, is deflect, because it's an ability that is quite easy to counter if you know it's coming. Uh. You know that game just gonna deflect at you. Everybody knows that. And the second they pop it out, you just stop firing at him, and then he becomes super, super vulnerable right afterwards. But if you happen to come across a Genji that has really good timing with deflect, deflect can become one of the deadliest and flashiest abilities in the game. And I think that is one of the abilities that has taken me the longest to get to a point where I, it's been useful for me um because for the longest time i just didn't have that spidey sense for it i i would react usually too late or too early which both are incredibly bad you have such a short window of opportunity to make that ability count that if you do it too late you're dead if you do it too early then you're just not gonna get any kills because people are just gonna ignore you for that split amount of time but I think finally it's been clicking for me. I think after dying enough times and after <laughs> messing at that ability up enough times and about 100 hours on the hero, um, it's finally happening to the point where it's hard to explain. I definitely don't consciously do it, but there are certain triggers or tails in the game that as soon as I see them, my thumb moves to the deflect and sure enough, I've gotten plenty of kills with it where with Widowmakers, with Pharah Rockets, with even like Lucio little slime balls. Uh the best is when you can do it <laughs> with uh senyatas that are loading their volley. their volley and you just deflect it at them or even deflect it on a hero. Today I had one that made me really proud where I was against an Anna and a Hanzo. And the Hanzo was kind of reading my timing but I saw the Anna sleep dart from behind him. So I deflected oh, the sleep no. dart into the Hanzo. And then because I knew that the Anna was out of sleep dart, I dashed to her, then pull out my ult, kill her, and then just dash back to the Hanzo kill the sleeping and Hanzo. kill him the sleeping Hanzo. And it just felt really good. <laughs> it was like, dude, totally red. And I, I, it was effortless, right? Like it just seemed to fit in. I My body moved as it needed. And yeah, that that'll think, do it for story time. Yeah, I think that'll do it. The if you guys want to talk more about this, that's what the Discord's for. You can head over to discordme omniclab and you can check out our very large community that's continuing to grow. I had a mention of somebody today. I wanted to kind of address or right? even one of our new diamond patrons, Britmus, was voicing some kind of displeasure and kind of frustration. She can't find people to group with. If you guys are looking for our our discord to group with you need to be regularly looking at the times you play and you need to continually post 
A lot of people are getting frustrated that they're like, I can only find people to group with if I show up to the game night and I can swap tags. It's like, well, we got to be proactive about that in the Discord if you want to have LFG. We used to have LFG channels, but nobody was using them. So we fused them with the individual channels. If you're looking to play, go to PC, Xbox, or PlayStation 4 channels and try to find people to group. If people want... We can start an LFG solo channel, and I'm considering doing that again so that people can try to find a group. I think that might be the best way to do it. It's a little bit more linear, newbies friendly, you know, stuff like that. And you also need to include your rank so people aren't like, oh, I want to queue with a master's guy. It's like, well, what rank are you? I'm 1800. It's like, no, that doesn't work. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the, the system doesn't let you do that. So you need to do that and also leave your battle tag can't use your battle tag unless it's a part of a linked to your discord client your discord client name or something like that you got to give it so people can use it so we're going to try to set that up this week um and I think that, uh, uh, if you guys andres go ahead as a little tip for everyone because or discord definitely doesn't move as fast as maybe some of the other looking for group discords like um the ow or the the reddit right. discord whatever you 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 you've frequent but i think that for hours you find a really nice community of people that are all trying to learn people that are very down to earth so if you're trying to group up with other people in our community my best advice is leave your battle tag leave the hours that you usually can play like leave a little schedule hey guys i can play mondays wednesdays and thursdays from this time to this time um and maybe a little bit about yourself Tell people why you like to play. Sometimes if you just say, I can flex anything, that's a little too general. Like, try to tell people, yeah. hey, I can play Sarya, Winston, Lucio, and Soldier 76. And they kind of have an idea. And tell them you're ranked. And maybe, like, your goals. Like, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to casually meet up with some people and do some QP? Are you trying to maybe get a group of, like, three or four people together to run some rank? Do you want to try to do a six stack to maybe find some scrims? Um, if you can put all of that information, it might not happen immediately, but it, it at least put it out there that you want to look that you're looking for that and kind of where you're standing so that over time people can see, Oh, I can see this guy. They can add you. They can meet up with you. Um, again, game nights are like an open house that we have. Everyone is out that day. You can directly interact with everyone and actually play with them directly. So if there's anyone in there that you actually particularly like their personality or the way that they play or you think that the heroes that they play would blend really well with the heroes that you play at him and let him know hey man i think you play really well we should try to play sometime outside of the game night at the end of the day you gotta be a little bit social if you're trying to get out there and play with other people especially overwatch we definitely are providing some space for you to do it but at the end of the day you know you gotta put in a little bit of your of your own and to be out there. don't post it once. Don't just post it once. If you post it once and you're like, okay, I did it. Like, okay. You <laughs> like, might, yeah, nobody's you might gonna have to follow up on that except for you. You gotta follow up on your you own. You might have stuff. to try a few times depending on the time of the day or just if you see another person asking for this sort of thing. Hey, I wanna group up and they are around your rank and maybe you can't do it right, right. away. Just tell them like, hey, this is my rank. I can't do it right now. But add me. We, maybe we can do it later. Like I yep. said, we've been here for almost two years now, so we're not really going anywhere. Uh, Overwatch is not going <laughs> anywhere, so <laughs> there's plenty of time for you to be people. Right. So we'll set that up this week. Hopefully that'll get in the channels by the time this is hitting your podcast ears. Uh, if you guys want to support the show without your finances, you can do that. You can listen to the show. We appreciate if you're actually listening to us right now. If you got a referral, great. Consider giving us an iTunes review. We got one new iTunes review from Athena128890. Thank you so much for your review. It was a, it was a big pick-me-up this week. Um, and uh, we just shifted a new thing so we can actually get our iTunes reviews back on track. Had to shift our global iTunes reviews set up, but we got everything settled now. Really appreciate you guys leaving these iTunes reviews. It helps us a lot. Right now, the iTunes store is like mondo screwed, whatever it is. Like, I don't know why, but there's like five or six other podcasts that are in front of us that aren't even Overwatch shows if you search the word Overwatch. So I don't know what the instability is going on with the iTunes store, but please continue to leave these. We're kind of like this 
we're in this space right now where we have the most United States iTunes reviews of any Overwatch podcast. And I'd like to keep that as one of our big staples. So we got to keep getting more iTunes reviews because everyone else is going to be racking them up. <laughs> Actually, now that you really... now that you mentioned that, I took some time this week to go through our iTunes reviews. I hadn't done it okay. in a couple of months now. And, you know, I, I was curious. I was like, hmm, I wonder what people are saying about the show since I've been kind of keeping my head down and just cranking out shows for like the right. past like two months. Um, so I was like, I, I wonder what feedback are we getting? And I'm not going to lie, guys. You made me a little bit emotional. My girlfriend was. <laughs> my girlfriend thought there was something wrong with me. She was like, "Are you okay?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm. I'm really okay right now. I'm really happy." Uh, <laughs> Your cat's even eyeing you funny. <laughs> I'm just. What is wrong with you? <laughs> no, seriously, you guys, warm our hearts with those reviews. I was going through all of them, and uh, all of them were saying how much you guys have learned from the show, um, how much you like listening, and always picking up a little something to make your game better. Um, how Rob and I blend well and how you like following our voices. And I don't know, to me, it's crazy because when we started, that is exactly what we wanted to do. We wanted to create an outlet for everyone to learn the game and for us to learn the game and be able to learn it with you guys. And I mean, the reviews say exactly that. It, to me, that, that we already made it, right? We were already successful because we've already accomplished the goal that we set out to do. And that just encourages me more to keep doing it and hopefully keep bringing you guys the best content that we can make. We really enjoy making this show. There hasn't been one month that Rob and I have been like, I don't know, man, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't think that that has ever happened or that topic has ever been brought up. I think that you guys have kept us going really strong and every day is just a pleasure doing this for you. Yeah, I mean, we wouldn't be doing this from two different sides of the entire hemisphere, like, if if we didn't love it. So, <laughs> let me tell you, scheduling is not the fun part of the show. The fun part of the show is doing it. So, we really <laughs> appreciate that with you guys. And uh, if you keep listening, we'll keep making it. So, that's that's kind of how a podcast works. Yeah, we know there's tons and tons of other venues that are way more convenient even for you. But we know that podcasting is a space that was really lacking in our particular venue. So, we want to keep doing that. And we'll keep taking suggestions, and we'll and the suggestions aren't necessarily something that we can always do with guests in particular, but we're trying. Uh, so keep them coming. We'll we'll keep taking the suggestions. It doesn't mean that we're going to implement them, but we'll still keep taking them. So keep them coming. A um, little bit of a, a blue post update before we close the show. Brigitte will be joining, or Brigitta uh, will be joining the battle March twentieth. So that is in four days of us recording, probably within a, like two days or a day of you listening to this if you're in the podcast realm um, on iTunes. So she will be joining. However, they're doing a new thing now where Brigitte will not be available in competitive until season 10. So this is different than it was in the past where you get a new hero, you get a week of the hero on the ranked, both in console and PC, and then you can play her in competitive. Now they're doing what they did with Blizzard World where they release something on PTR, they put it into the game, and then you don't play it in a competitive format until the next season at the beginning. This is a lot of community feedback, I believe, is going into this because lots of people are like, why do you change the meta so drastically in the middle of a season for us to basically just throw everything out? Now, this is a little different than content patches and balance patches. People are always asking for that. So this is, I guess, a step in the right direction. People are also wanting balance patches more frequently, and there's a lot of people that want them right at the beginning of a season. So for what it's worth, don't know what they're doing for that. However, there is a Hanzo update, and the last bit of news here is that Hanzo's update will be coming in April. So pack up your scatter arrows, boys. We're up for a new <laughs> ride. Hanzo mains. It's time. All right, that's going to do it for the show. Uh, if you guys want to find us, we are Twitch affiliates. You can go to twitch.tv slash Omniclab to catch us live. We're typically on Friday mornings and Friday nights, if uh, depending on guests. So this is typically the 9.30, 9.30 setup, 9.30 a.m., 9.30 p.m. If you're, if you're wondering, you can check those times. We typically post almost all of our updates to Twitter and or uh, the Discord first and then Twitter second. If you're looking for updates there, if you guys want to find this, everything is on the website. Twitter, Facebook, merch, Patreon, YouTube, 
everything. Merch includes mugs, hoodies, t-shirts, all of those stuff. We do have them. We have merch, guys. We don't talk about it very often because we don't get a lot of payoff. But if you guys really like merch, boom, you can support the show and get some merch. And I have many reports that it's comfy. So please go get some <laughs> if you're looking for comfy clothes. You can send us emails. You can submit questions in our podcast questions, uh, podcast questions section of the Discord. Man, I cannot talk anymore. It's time for the show to end. Andres, where can people find you? If you want to personally find me, you can look me up on Twitter at iPlayGames. You spell that I-P-L-A-I Games. You can also find me talking Overwatch League over at the Owl Recap with Bob and Melarina. Check that out if you're into the Overwatch League. And this week, I got to guest on a very cool podcast. This is called the Nerd EX RX or Nerd Exercise Prescription Podcast by my friend Aaron Bustle. Uh, yeah, he's been my personal fitness coach. He's been helping me out online, actually. It's uh, a little it's a little weird setup. I've been trying it out and actually has been working out pretty well. I guess it is 2018 and basically everything that I do now, I do it online, including this podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been working out with him and it's been helping me kind of stay fit while on the desk, creating all this content and playing all these video games. And I got to guess on his podcast. He's trying to bridge the gap between nerd culture and fitness. So talk a little bit about games, talk a little bit about fitness and how you can improve yourself as well as staying up to date with all that stuff. So check that out if you guys are into that. And if you want to find me, I'm on Twitch. Or sorry, not Twitch. I'm on Twitter and Instagram with the tag not rot. You can always catch me in the Discord. Andres and I are very, very active. In that, if you want to tag us, we'll generally almost always respond uh, within 12 hours, especially for me, um, being on the other side of the globe of most of you. Um, if you want to get some Hearthstone content, we have a brand new expansion that is launching. And we got some new cards, and I'm excited to record. And we also have a special announcement for my podcast called Velen's Chosen. We are doing live shows from now on. And I just did a lot of work on that this week. So I played a little bit less Overwatch so I could get some elements together for that. If you want to catch it, that will be, if you're watching the live stream, all four of you, this will be tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow night. Uh, we're, we're doing a live show for the Velen's Chosen podcast, talking new cards and new ladder stuff. And my co-host Eve just hit rank six legend in wild, or rank nine legend in wild this month. Very so, impressive. Holy cow. First time in wild. And a top 10 finish, or not top 10 finish, but top 10 place at, at some point. So pretty cool stuff. If you guys like that, you can go check it out there. Remember, don't be a lab rep, be a scientist. And we'll see you guys on the next week. Hopefully we'll have a new guest and some new beakers for you. See you guys. See ya.